We're now going to talk about minima and maxima. So this has many real-world applications. In real life, we want to maximize everything good and minimize everything bad. Um, so we're going to minimize and maximize functions of several variables. But first, let's review how this works for functions of one variable. So suppose you have a function y equals f of x. And you say that a is a maximum, or a global maximum, if f of a is greater than or equal to f of x for all x. So a is a value of x for which f has the largest possible value. Uh, and we say that a is a global minimum if f of a is less than or equal to f of x for all x. So a is a point where f takes the smallest possible value. And these may or may not exist. We'll see examples where they do and where they don't. And we also say that a is a local maximum if f of a is greater than or equal to f of x for all x in a neighborhood of a. I'll keep this informal. If we wanted to say this really formally, we would say that there exists epsilon greater than zero, such that whenever the distance from x to a is less than epsilon and f of x is defined, we have that f of a is greater than or equal to f of x. And then a local minimum is where f of a is less than or equal to f of x for all x in a neighborhood of a. Okay, and then one of the basic facts is that if um, a is a local minimum or maximum, if a is not on the boundary of the domain of f, for example, we might be uh, talking about f defined in a closed interval, So we're assuming a is not one of the boundary points of the interval. And if f prime of a is defined, then the derivative f prime of a has to equal 0. Because if the derivative of a were positive, then you could move to the right a little bit and f would increase. And you could move to the left a little bit and f would decrease. So a could not be a local minimum or maximum, and a similar argument if f prime of a is negative. Okay, so to, to say that a different way, we can say that if a is a local min or a local max, then at least one of the following holds. So first of all, it could be that f prime of a is equal to 0. Second, it could be that f prime of a is undefined, so if the limit you need to define the derivative doesn't exist. And third, the remaining possibility is that a is on the boundary of the domain of f.
Okay, so if you want to find the minimum or maximum, um, well, a global minimum or a global maximum must be a local minimum or local maximum. So you just have to solve for all the points where f prime of a is equal to zero, and then also check the points where f prime is undefined and check the boundary of the domain. So to draw an example, so we're going to look at a function defined on the closed interval from b to c, uh, and it will go like this. Okay. Now here, this is a point where f prime is equal to zero. And it's a local maximum. In fact, it's a global maximum. And here's a point where f prime is equal to zero. And it's a local minimum, but it's not the global minimum, because the global minimum is on the boundary. So this is the global minimum. OK. Now, um, there's also the uh, extreme value theorem. which says that if f is a continuous function, defined on a closed interval, then f has a global maximum and a global minimum, maybe more than one. Um, if f is not defined on a closed interval, but on an open interval, or say on the whole real line, then it may or may not have a global maximum and a global minimum. Um, for example, if you take just f of x equals x, which is defined on the whole real line, this has no global minimum or global maximum. But as soon as we restrict to a closed interval, it's guaranteed to exist. And you find the global minimum or maximum by looking for all points that satisfy one of these three conditions or more. OK. And there's also the second derivative test, so this is a way of deciding whether a point where the derivative is zero is a local minimum or a local maximum. So suppose that f prime of a equals zero. So then if f double prime of a is greater than zero, and here I'm assuming that f double prime of a is defined, then a is a local minimum. So the picture looks like this. You have the graph looking like that, where it's curving up. There's this second derivative is positive, says that the slope is increasing as we go to the right. If f double prime of a is less than 0, then a is a local maximum. You note the, the inequality sort of goes backwards. So here, here we have a less than sign. So something's negative, but we're actually talking about a maximum. Right, so here the, the slope is decreasing as we go to the right, and the graph near a looks like that. And if f double prime of a equals zero, or f double prime of a is undefined, then we don't know anything. It could be a local max, a local min, or neither. And to give you examples of that, um, so first if we look at, say, f of x equals x cubed. So 
the graph looks like this. So at zero, we have f prime of zero equals zero, and f double prime of zero also equals zero. So the derivatives are, are three x squared and six x. However, this is not a local min or a local max, as you can see from the picture. Now, if we take f of x equals x to the 4, so now the graph looks like this. I just need to go through the origin there. Okay, and then at 0, we have f prime of 0 equals 0, and f double prime of 0 equals 0, and this is a local minimum. In fact, it's a global minimum. And we could also take f of x equals minus x to the 4. So again, here f prime of 0 equals 0, and f double prime of 0 equals 0. But this is a local and global max. Anyway, so for the second derivative test, if you're just trying to find where is the minimum and where is the maximum, then you don't really need this because you can just solve for all the points satisfying these conditions and see for which one is f biggest and for which one is f smallest. However, for some other situations, for example, if you study ordinary differential equations in Math 54, then the second derivative test is very important for deciding whether um, fixed points of a dynamical system are stable or unstable.